Welcome back, this is theCUBE, I'm Paul Gillen. We're here at the Software AG International User Group Conference in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, the calm before the storm here right now, it's quiet behind us, but in a couple of hours this place will be packed with uh, customers of Software AG uh, who are um, represent have a whole variety of technical disciplines. Uh, with us today is, uh, before we get started, is Girish Pancha, who is uh, Software AG's Chief Product Officer for the web methods and the stream sets product lines. That's right. And thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, I'm excited to be here. Now you are an entrepreneur. You started StreamSets mm -hmm. and you sold it to Software AG. What did you think, uh, the integration market is so crowded, there's so many different companies. What did you think you could do differently and do better? Yeah, no, look, I, I've been in the integration space for a few decades. I was the Chief Product Officer of Informatica prior to that. Uh, so your question is very relevant because when, when I started StreamSets, even my you know, former colleagues wondered, you know, what is there to do in, in data integration, let alone the broader integration space. Um, and you know, I didn't really think I was going to do stream sets when, when I when I retired from Informatica. But I came to the realization that there were a number of you know, very uh, secular trends, you know, disruptions that were happening in the data integration space. So uh, first was the rearchitecting to a cloud native um, cloud native world. world. The second was uh, the speeding up of these um, capabilities to keep in keep in line with the business. So what we what we use what we describe as batch to streaming. And the uh, the third was the shift away from uh, let's call it transactional data, you know, managing transactional data. In the old days, when you talked about a you know customer, you'd think about how much did they spend on you. You know, so you'd go to your your application to figure out what that was. And, and what was happening was that we were moving to really trying to have a more holistic view of everything, you know, customers, employees, our partners, et cetera, where there was a lot more event and what, what we called interaction data that was kind of around, around the edges. You know, the, the term that was being used was big data in those days, obviously, and, and that kind of information was much less structured, you know, much more fluid, always on, so these are the kind of fundamental uh, kind of changes in the technology landscape that I figured you know, the existing incumbents would have a hard time modernizing. Not to say it can't be done, but I thought there was at least a, a, t and a kind of a time to market opportunity with, uh, with stream sets, and that's what I did. A lot to unpack advantage. there. I mean, in, the, in terms of integration and bringing together all this structured and unstructured data, we're seeing the, the age of the data lake now. That's right. Or the data lake house, uh, the iceberg file format, some really transformative technology. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you seeing that changing the integration challenges that your customers face? Yeah, so, and that's, that's uh, kind of front and center, you know, that's, that's our sweet spot. Um, so we, we started off dealing with, you know, dare I say, the legacy technology that's Hadoop, uh, and now you know, most of our business is around data lakes and data lake houses and iceberg, et cetera. Um, you know, at, the, at the highest level, what I would say is that it, it hurts, or it makes it more difficult at, at design time, because historically you had much better typed information in your source systems, and now, now you really don't. Uh, but I'd say equally importantly, when you talk about the runtime or the ops side of the world, the operations side of the world, because of the fluidity of those sources, things are much more prone to you know, breaking and, and whatnot. And of course, on top of that, there's this expectation what DevOps did to, to applications. There's an expectation that we have an integration working at, at the speed of business. So all in all, you need the system to be continuous and the system to be able to rapidly deal with kind of unstructured, semi-structured, unknown data. And so that's the that's areas of focus uh, that I had. You also mentioned streaming, and that's an interesting topic because I mean the research I've seen is that only about half of enterprises are using streaming in any capacity yeah, at yeah. all. Is that because the business doesn't demand it, or are they missing out in many cases on an opportunity? I think it's a ladder. Um, you know, I think, I, I don't think, th there's probably only maybe 10% of all the enterprises on earth that would say we don't need to do things uh, that way. And of course, within each enterprise, we did hit uh, uh, buyers and us users that said, no, we don't care. You know, um, take like uh, uh, equities, for example. You know, they, they make these bets, if, if it's not HFT, if it's not high frequency trading, they're making these decisions and holding long, so they don't need streaming every minute. They're happy to kind of look at it up periodically, whether it's daily, weekly, quarterly, you know, you know there are different, different um, things there. But 
I would say everywhere we look generally within financial services, healthcare, all these um, you know, verticals where we're you know, very strong in, there is a need for streaming. The, the challenge, I think, is, is kind of twofold. The existing technologies really did not handle it. Um, so you know, now you say, okay, well, do I just kind of make do and maybe try to speed that up still to give me kind of a good enough solution? Or do I really start investing in a new technology in the same space to handle my streaming problems. So the value uh, of those use cases, I think, um, you know, some in, in both with verticals and to a certain extent within the verticals, you know, different different um, companies, enterprises have different kind of DNAs in terms of, you know, are they going to be early adopters or are they going to wait it out? And and I think that's basically what it is. In fact, I would say. I could even say maybe I was a little too early to the game there because, you know, in 2015, uh, you know, when we when we launched the company, uh, in fact, I uh, the the name is Stream Sets. I focused on the set-based transmissions and and the capabilities because people would say, oh, we don't need streaming. Well, a lot of them said we will bring you on for streaming in addition to the incumbents um, that are in the space. So, so I think that's where we're at. It. It's you know the, these things end up being kind of a, in my mind, a, you know, kind of a decade, multi-decade. Uh, you know, kind of transformation, and so we're in the middle of that. You, you certainly were ahead of your time, 2015. <laughs> uh, you have conceived of this concept of, uh, you're redefining iPass, really, in your yeah. super iPass concept. What is that, uh, how is your approach to integration different from everybody else's? Yeah, look, so I, I mentioned the, uh, the beginning that you know, we, we started off with this kind of cloud-native um, approach to, to data integration. Uh, you know, probably about three, four years ago, we started, uh, kind of made first contact with Software AG. Uh, and of course, to certain folks, Software AG has got all sorts of uh, technologies like mainframe technologies and whatnot. Um, but I actually was very aware of web methods as an app integration technology. I'd actually partnered with web methods at my previous job to try to marry this uh, idea of application integration and data integration into a single, single kind of combined, in this case, a multi-vendor, but a single offering. And we actually had been pretty successful with that in the in the 2000s. Um, we called it a business activity platform uh, to kind of get these get these two together. So three four years ago, when I when I kind of reconnected with with Software AG, which had bought Web Methods, you know, um, 15 years back, I got really excited both about the the higher level idea of marrying you know stream sets with Web Methods, but equally importantly, the fact that Web Methods had made that shift to being cloud native and being kind of a, a software as service product too. I, I should say a hybrid because you know, obviously we're not leaving anything behind. So there's a large, uh, large install base that, that has web methods deployed on premise. But most of our new business now comes from um, the, the SaaS offering. And so the SaaS offering is aware of the on-premise offering and, and you know, works really well together. So when I learned this, or when I saw this, I got really excited. I thought that this is you know, one of those things that's been the holy grail. You know, the, the, I think the business problem exists. The technology maturity wasn't there to really kind of put these two together until everything got componentized and you know, with no service, so microservices and everything else. And now I think the market maturity is starting to kind of you know, emerge. And it's going to take a little while because, you know, uh, I would give, you know, I give the example of just business productivity tools. You know, take like, um, there was a time when I, when I first learned how to use a spreadsheet, and people would talk about PowerPoint. I'd be like, I don't know what that is, and I don't care. You know, because I was, I was a quant guy, and I, all I, that's all I cared about. Uh, and then suddenly, you know, I, I couldn't buy Excel on its own. I had to buy, you know, Office or G Suite or, you know, whatever else. And, and, but along the way, I matured to realize that, oh, I can embed my Excel charts in my spreadsheets, you know, et cetera. So, so, so sorry, my Excel charts <laughs> in my PowerPoints. Um, and once you start getting that, you suddenly realize you're opening up a broader set of use cases. Sometimes it may be uh, I myself do, does all the work, but in other situations, it may be a collaboration. Somebody creates me that spreadsheet, I embed it in my, my PowerPoint and I'm off and running, right? And I don't really care about all the gory details of that spreadsheet. That's the analogy, I think, um, that I would apply to the integration space, that there are components today, there's a lot of different uh, kind of personas that, that use these different components, but there is absolute business value in the long run for all of these things to be working together and ideally from a single vendor. 
Wonder, it's a wonderful uh, metaphor you, you use, and of course, cloud native uh, constructs make this easier That's for right. these components to be integrated together. Um, what about the role of AI? Uh, your former employer, Informatica, is talking up a lot yeah. now about the value of AI and data integration. Uh, is that a game changer in data integration? Will your customers be able to use AI to make sense out of all this varying data yeah. in various formats and types? I definitely think it's a game changer. Um, I think it's a bit of a, a kind of quote unquote show me story. I mean, you could, I could have said the same thing about OpenAI 10, 15 years ago, or not, not, let's not say 15, let's say seven, eight years ago when they, when they were founded. And, and you, know, you would have to wait to see the end results before you actually said, okay, this is good enough and this is cool. I think the same thing is going to happen um, really in any, any vertical and definitely in the integration space, both data and app, app integration. Um, and the reason being that the amount of data uh, so, so let me break it down. So, general, generative AI gives you the conversational interfaces, great. But the domain-specific information which you need, which is easily available for generic conversations, you know, the people are scouring the whole web, web for anything and everything there, but integration domain-specific information is not out there. It's actually locked into these you know, products mm. and technologies that we have out here, right? So, so I think, he or she that figures that out, captures the most amount of integration data, and then does the right things with it, is going to you know win because they're going to show the, the value. Um, I'm going to be a bit of a contrarian. I don't like to knock, uh, definitely not my former employer, but, <laughs> uh, uh, but and it's not to say we're not doing this, but, but really we break down uh, the AI application into three different uh, buckets. The first is, um, the collaboration with the li with the lines of business, you know, the emergence of business technologists, you know, that used to be called shadow IT, and shadow IT basically stayed away from IT. You know, that was what the that was. Now the, they're being integrated. Now yeah. they're integrating, and now they're now calling they're themselves the business technology. Yeah. And enterprise guys are you know embracing them, and they're embracing the enterprise, etc. So so there's kind of, I think, an opportunity to bring AI into that to help with that collaboration. So that's one area. The second area, which is I think what everybody thinks about and assumes is making those engineers productive, more productive, right? So what if instead of writing all this code, you can just magically you know, say a few things and out pops enterprise grade um, artifacts, you know, data flows and data pipelines or application flows and data pipelines, et cetera. So that's the second bucket. And the third bucket is around uh, the operations. You know, what if you could very quickly understand when anomalous things are happening what the root cause analysis of that is, and have that in this conversational interface to you know, get it out, right? So, so I think those are the three buckets, and I feel everybody tends to talk about this middle bucket a lot. Uh, and I frankly think that's the hardest, and you, I could even argue maybe it's the least valuable. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to bring AI to get rid of one developer at this point in time. Maybe in the future we won't need any humans, but that's not where you want to optimize for right now and say we don't need developers, we can use AI. The, the other two areas are, I think, ripe, because it's a new way of kind of sharing information and thinking and developing things, uh, and you know, we'll either have to create a lot of tooling around it, or maybe AI can help. And the, the operations, I mean, we, I just came from our, our customer advisory board uh, talk, uh, not talk, um, meeting this morning, and resoundingly, everybody has his operations problem. You know, because you know, every time you do something complicated, you run it a hundred times, you run it a thousand times before you change that, that what, whatever you did in the first place. And that's where, when things go wrong, you know, other, like, I was going to give you other statistics, like you know, eight out of 10 people say this, this complex technology is make, it, make everything very brittle. We have an operations problem. And I think if we can bring AI to that, where we actually have a lot more data, you know, 10, 10 times as much runtime metadata as we have design time metadata. So if you can bring AI to that, I think you know that could be a, a cool game changer, at least in our space, and I would argue in many other spaces. Uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that things will be changing in the, within the next few months. Uh, web methods and uh, stream sets are going to be migrating to IBM. You will become part of IBM, as will many of your people. What are you telling your customers right now about what this change means? Yeah, so look, it's, it's, uh, it's not just a product technology transfer, it's an actual kind of full business unit uh, you know, transfer. So we have all the functions go to market, you know, sales, marketing, uh, customer support, customer success, 
engineering, product, you know, the whole whole shebangs uh, kind of heading heading over to IBM. So, from our customers' perspective, you know, they they know that the only things that they may have to deal with uh, differently, which they shouldn't have dealt at all, is some back office things. So, um, so I think that's that's um, that's like let's call it, you know, the uh, assuaging their fears, so to speak. Uh, you know, so that's that's a piece of it. Uh, but really, what I would say is that we're all very excited about this because, you know, even as I talk about data and app integration, there are other th things around, for example, um, event management, which we don't have, which IBM has. So I think actually that we can bring more components into this super iPaaS framework. Uh, and of course, IBM's got a very, very deep te technology stack in the data space. Uh, which we don't have, so there's almost no overlap between stream sets and what IBM has. So bringing all of those kind of capabilities, data observability, uh, data lineage, things that have existed forever, which we didn't focus on as a startup at stream sets, bring those and leveraging that, and of course, there's Watson X and, you know, and the AI platform there. So you put that all together, I think there's technology um, kind of synergies and, and excitement about what we can do together. There's excitement, I think, on their part because they've made a you know, big bet on this and we're actually going to be at scale and functioning you know, the way we've been functioning. It is not just a tuck-in type acquisition at IBM. Uh, so I think it can actually be transformational to the rest of the integration and automation stack at IBM. So, uh, so generally, you know, when I talk to our customers, I say, obviously change you know, always is uncomfortable and they can, you can always point to an acquisition by IBM that didn't go as well as uh, you expected, but you know, in this particular case, you know, we should treat this as a, a specimen, of, specimen of one, and um, you know, go at it. So that's that's what we're looking to do. And my colleague Dave, uh, Dave Vellante, the chief analyst at uh, at the Cube Research, very bullish on IBM right yeah. now. Says that company is is undergoing a transfer transformation. Thinks Watson X looks like a fantastic uh, technology, and uh, something that uh, yeah, sounds it's, very it's exciting. Not being run by a product. Uh, leader for the first time in the history, I think, of the company. So it reminds me a lot of what happened at Microsoft about 10 years ago. So that's that's where I feel they're at right That now. was exciting too. Yeah. Girish Pancha, thank you very much for joining us, taking time out of your busy schedule at this busy conference. My pleasure. I'm Paul Gillen, this is theCUBE. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.